Hello, welcome back. You know, I haven't done a formal introduction in a while. So if you're new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind Pattern Scout. I sell sewing patterns and I have this YouTube channel where I talk all about garment sewing and some other things occasionally, but mostly garment sewing. So today I wanna to work on drafting a cute little summer top. Last week I was in Target and you know, I like to just go to Target sometimes, wander around with my Starbucks drink and feel luxurious in Target and buy things that I don't really need to buy. I don't typically buy clothing at Target because I make a lot of my own clothing, but I do like to go and just look at their clothing and kind of get a little bit of inspiration because they do have a lot of really cute stuff. Anyway, whenever I see things that I really like, I think, oh, that's really cute. I could probably make that. So when I was in Target, I found this little tank top. Let me find the picture of it here. It's pretty simple. It's just a little triangle top with kind of a princess seam down the center of the triangle top and you know a fitted bodice and then it has some shearing on the back bodice. So I've actually made something kind of similar to that before. Last year I shared a video where I drafted a dress that I wore to a wedding as a wedding guest and it turned out really well. And I have been really wanting to kind of elaborate on that pattern a lot more since I made it and make other dresses and tank tops for summer. So I thought I would just kind of go through the process of drafting that really quickly. Um, I am using the book Pattern Making for Fashion Design as a reference for this. And I use this book a lot as a reference for pattern drafting. I start with my bodice sloper, and I use that as the building block for all of the patterns that I create. I have a class on Skillshare that I created a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago now. In that class, I show how to draft a bodice sloper using Adobe Illustrator. So if you are interested in learning how to draft using Adobe Illustrator, I definitely recommend checking out that class that I have on Skillshare. I'll put a link to that down in the description below this video. And once you have that sloper drafted, you can use that over and over and over again to create new patterns. And that is how I create all of my sewing patterns. So anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna draft this. We'll do a little muslin mock-up and then I will sew up the final pattern. All right, let's get started. Before I start drafting the pieces for this bra top, I need to make some adjustments to my bodice slopers. And the first thing we wanna do is find the bust point or the bust apex. And to do this, we're just gonna draw a line straight through the center of each of the darts at the side seam and the waist. Where those lines meet is where our bust point or our bust apex will be located. Next, we just need to transfer that side seam dart to the waist seam dart. And to do this, we're just going to isolate that lower left corner between the two darts and rotate that around that bust point to close the dart in the side seam. And you'll see that that excess has been transferred to the dart at the waist. Now we can just clean up those darts and extend the dart point of the waist dart all the way to the bust apex or the bust point. Now that we've adjusted the darts, we can move on to the side seam, and I just want to bring in the side seam about a half inch under the arm side. Next, we need to draw ourselves a couple of guidelines to help us draft the bra top foundation for this pattern. So I'm drawing a line from the center of the shoulder down to the bust point, and then from the bust point straight across to the center front of the bodice. I'll also need a guide for how much coverage to have over the bust, so I'm gonna draw a bust radius. I'm drawing mine at 3.25 inches for the radius. The book that I use recommends three inches, but I like a little bit of extra coverage. And the bust radius is just centered on that bust point. To help shape the princess seams and give the bust cups a little bit more natural coverage, over the bust, we need to take out a little bit of additional ease at the top and center front of the bust. So I'm creating one wedge that is centered over the line that extends to the shoulder and another wedge that is centered over the line that extends to the center front bodice. The one over the shoulder needs to be 7 8 inch wide and the one over that center front line needs to be 3 quarter inch wide. Now I can start drafting the bra cups. So I'll start with the side front bodice. I'm starting this one about a half inch below the arm side and extending it up to close to the shoulder, but I'm kind of guesstimating here how tall I want this. Then I will draft the center front bust cup and make sure to add a little bit of a ledge at the top for inserting a strap. And then I can draft that center bottom bust cup to follow the curvature under the bust radius. And I'm using the waist dart and all of those guidelines that I just drafted for myself as the boundaries of each of these pieces. Now I just wanna clean up these pieces a little bit. And so the first thing that I wanna do is rotate out this little wedge in that center front bust cup to make that into one piece. Then I just want to redraw these pieces and smooth out the curves at that princess seam that goes through the center of the bust. Because I don't want any sharp corners along that seam, I want it to be nice and smooth so that it follows the natural curvature of the body. 
For the rest of the pieces of the front bodice, I just need the two wedges below those bust cups. And this is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna trace those rectangles following the shape that is already there and also meeting up with the bottom of the bust cups for each piece. And that completes all of the pieces for the front bodice. I'm gonna set these aside and come back to these for the final details, but now we can move on to the back bodice. The back bodice is gonna be really simple and we're actually only gonna need the bottom portion of the back bodice. But to prepare this first, I just want to extend that waist dart point all the way up to the point where it's level with that shoulder dart. And to match the side seam from the front bodice, I just want to bring in that side seam under the arm side by a half inch on the back bodice as well. Then I'll just draw in the rectangular shapes on either side of that waist dart, also dropping it at the side seam by a half inch to match the front. Now we have the back bodice pieces drafted and I do want to make an adjustment to that center back bodice piece because I do want that piece to be shirred so it'll have some stretch to it. So to accommodate for the shirring, I'm just going to extend that by 50%. So I'll just take the width of that center back bodice, multiply it by 1.5 to get the overall width that I'll need it to be for the shearing. So now we have drafted the basic pieces for the front and the back bodice of this top. I just need to add seam allowance and then I also want to make sure that I add my grain lines and label all of my pattern pieces so I know what is what, which way is up and down, all of that good stuff. And now we can print the pattern. So in that Skillshare class that I mentioned before, I also show how to create a printing template so that you can print your patterns at home. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in learning how to do that. And that way you can create PDF patterns for yourself and kind of keep all of your patterns cataloged on your computer. And I don't know, it's just a nice little system. going to be using some old muslins to create this so this is just from a top that I was working on a few weeks ago and I just took the muslin apart ironed all the pieces and I'll use that to cut all of these pieces and I try to reuse muslin fabric as much as possible I mean sometimes it's not possible to be quite honest but if I can I'm going to reuse it otherwise it'll probably just hang out in my scrap pile for an eternity or until I decide that it's time to part with it but I do try to repurpose these as much as possible. First draft muslin here and it's close but I do need to make a few adjustments to this. So the first thing is it's really tight right across the bust apex right here so I think I just need to release the seam allowance just a little bit to add a little bit more ease just here but I think up here it's okay um, and then down here I actually needed to take in the ease just a little bit more so I'll probably just make that curvature a little bit more curved on these pieces and then also take it in here just a little bit and then taper it back out. And I think those are probably the main issues that I have with this right now. I think once I do that, that'll probably be pretty close. I just have some straps that I kind of pinned on here. They're not very secure. I also basted in a zipper here to get this on and off because I didn't want to fool with the shearing on the back bodice here. I thought that would be just too much work for a, for a muslin. So I basically just kind of sewed it on as it would be normally if I wasn't doing shearing. Okay, so that definitely helped quite a bit. Um, this is still a little bit wrinkly here just because I think the way I kind of on the fly made that adjustment, I didn't really sew it super neat. Um, I think I might add just a little bit more ease right here though. Uh, I just didn't have enough seam allowance to really do that right now. So I'm gonna make those adjustments and there was one other thing that I was thinking about doing. Oh, I'm gonna raise up the underarm, that half inch that I brought it down, I'm gonna raise it back up because I feel like that's too low because this is with the seam allowance on it. And so it'll be even lower if I, you know, 
finish that edge. So I'm gonna raise it back up to where it was before. But yeah, I like the way this cups under the bust a lot better now. Let's see if I can turn. Yeah, you can see it kind of cups under a lot better and fits a little bit closer under the under bust here. This piece right here is straightened out. I've also got a seam here that will not be here on the final. This will actually be cut on the fold. I like the coverage of the bust. And once I get this pattern established, this will be something that I think I could use to make tank tops and dresses. And I think it would actually be a nice fundamental pattern to have in my collection. So I think I'm gonna call it a day for today. It's getting close to four, it's like 3.30 almost. And um, probably work on this some more tomorrow and maybe tomorrow I'll actually sew the final garment. Also today I decided to wear my wide leg pants that I recently made. And I don't think I've actually worn these out of the house yet. I did today. I took the dog for a walk in these pants. <laughs> But I work from home so much that a lot of times I don't wear all of the stuff that I've made for myself that often. And I was like, you know what? These pants are actually very comfortable. They're super cute. And I've been wearing them all day and working in them. And I friggin' love them. I did a video on these a few weeks ago. I'll post that video down below and in the cards up here in the little eye. And uh, yeah, I love how these turn out. These are from the letter low kit that I have that I've talked about so much that I love and really happy with how these turned out and I have really enjoyed wearing these today. Okay, so I went ahead and sewed up a second muslin with those changes. I just want, kind of wanted to check a couple of things. And there are a couple more things I want to change now that I've done the second muslin. Um, I think the bust fit is a little bit better, but I did notice that I was having some rippling still along this princess seam here. And this dress form has, I've kind of padded it out to roughly my measurements. Um, so it's pretty close. It's not I, exact, but it's not exact, but it's pretty close. And I just thought it would be easier to show the things I want to do on the mannequin. Anyhow, so I was still getting a little bit of rippling across this princess seam here and I was kind of pinching it. Usually when I'm fitting, I kind of pinch things and pull things and kind of see where I might be able to kind of take out some of that ease and make things work a little bit more smoothly. So I was kind of pinching here right at the bust apex and I think I can probably take out a wedge. So I would do basically a slash and then compress. So I would slash from the seam line here all the way to the corner here and then you know close that gap to kind of take out that little bit of ease there and I think that would kind of help smooth that out when I had this on I also felt like it was just a little bit too low cut for my liking um, I didn't think it really looked bad but I just know for modesty's sake I would probably be a little bit more comfortable if that plunge was not quite so low so I think what I'm going to do is actually raise up this center point here about three quarter inch to an inch and I'm also going to widen it to about a half inch. So this will kind of have a little bit of a flat point at the top here where this connects. But I think that will kind of cover just a little bit more. It'll be a little bit more high. And it would also kind of release a little bit of the tension here across here. And it would also be a little bit easier to construct. So I'll probably go ahead and just do one more muslin just to be sure uh, that I like the way it fits because I would like for this pattern to be something that I can use over and over again. So I might as well just go ahead and get the fit the way that I want it. Oh, and another thing I'll probably do is right now I've kind of got a little bit of a curve here at the top of these triangle parts. I think I'm just going to straighten that out and make it a little bit more straight. It'll be pretty subtle, but I think I will just like the shape of that a little bit better. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere now. All right, I'm getting excited. I do still have a little bit of rippling here on this seam, but I think that could be due partially to the way that the seams are finished. They're just not finished. So it's kind of a little bit of a messy finish on the seams. I also used a basting stitch to put this together. So that wider stitch is just a little bit less secure. So I think that could be causing some of the little drag lines here. So I'm not super worried about that. So I think I can call this bra top foundation pattern done and I'm ready to move on to making my final piece. I also really like that I raised this center point up here. Um, before it was kind of down here and I felt like I was showing a little bit of like interior side boob, which isn't the vibe I'm going for. So I'm glad I raised that up. I like the way that looks too. And it'll just be a little bit easier to finish. I've just got the, you know, seam allowance kind of folded in here at the top, but I also like that line as well. 
right before I put this muslin on, I was like, damn, if this thing does not fit, if it doesn't work out, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I may have to kind of table this video for a little while, but luckily it came to a place where I'm really happy with it. I think I'm ready to move forward. I may actually wait until tomorrow to sew up the garment, but now that I've done this, I think it's gonna be a really quick sew because, I mean, putting these muslin, every time I had to do a new muslin, it only took me like 10 or 15 minutes to throw it together. So I know that the sewing part of this for the final garment will be actually pretty quick. I've also got some bra cups in here. So these are just some bra cups from sports bras that I've had in the past. So I keep all of the bra cups from those things because I use them for swimwear when I was making swimwear. And I also can use them for things like this. And um, yeah, I have probably like 20 pairs of bra cups that I've just kept over the years from sports bras that I've gotten that have the removable cups. Um, you can buy them online as well. I've just accumulated them over the years. I'm happy with the progress today. I was feeling a little frustrated earlier, but I think I have come back around and I am ready to move on to the final garment. Also, I wanted to point out my pants. I did make these pants. These are the Nelly joggers. This is a, a pattern that I sell in my pattern shop. I'm trying to pull out some of my clothing that I've made that I never get a chance to wear, but is actually kind of comfortable. I'm trying to wear that stuff more um, because I get to show it to you guys. But yeah, I really love these pants. I've released these a few years ago and um, I've gotten a lot of wear out of these actually. I decided to go with this kind of Topi gray floral print. This is from Minerva and I will link the fabric down below. And for the pieces that I cut, I cut two pieces for all of the bust cups and that center front panel that kind of goes up between the bust cups. And then for the outer layer of the bust cups, they are interfaced. And I actually already had interfaced this fabric for a different project. So that saved me some time on that, but you can't really tell but this layer is interfaced. So I just have a single layer for the side panels on the front bodice. And then for the back bodice, I have a single layer for all of those. Um, I've decided to put my zipper in the center back here. So I'm splitting this center back piece in half. And this, these two pieces here are gonna be shirred. So they're gonna be kind of like, have some stretch to them. I think that'll just make the bodice a little bit more comfortable to wear. And I think I am gonna cut a flounce for the shoulder and the strap. I haven't cut the strap yet, um, but I haven't decided exactly how I wanna do that. And I'm going to wait to cut that out and just kind of get the basics of the bodice assembled. So to do the shearing, I'm going to be using elastic thread and this is what it looks like. It's very stretchy, very stretchy, very springy. And I'm just going to be wrapping it around this bobbin. So um, I will wrap this manually instead of doing it on my sewing machine, just to make sure that I get it at the right tension. And when I'm wrapping this, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it, you know, somewhat tight, but not too tight, not too loose, kind of like the Goldilocks of wrapping this on the bobbin. I'll only be using the elastic thread on the bobbin thread, not on the top thread. On the top thread, I'll just use my normal thread that I use for the rest of the project. I'll also release the bobbin tension just a little bit by turning this little screw about a quarter turn counterclockwise. And this will just make it easier for that thread to come out of the bobbin. Once I have my shearing thread loaded into the bobbin, I can sew normally with a straight stitch. And I'm gonna backstitch to start the shearing thread. And some people say you shouldn't backstitch. I always do it because I don't feel like tying a knot and it actually works great. So I'm using that first row of stitching to tack down the hem that I folded into the top of this piece of fabric. And then I'm just gonna work my way back and forth and create rows that are about a half inch apart. So when I get to the end of a row, I'm just gonna pivot and stitch down about five or six stitches, pivot again and start stitching in the opposite direction to form the next row of shearing. 
and I'll continue that process all the way down the entire length of this piece of fabric. And as I'm sewing, I'm making sure to stretch out the fabric so that I'm not sewing gathers in the fabric. I wanna be able to still stretch this out to its original length once I have all of these stitches sewn in here. And I'll do this for both of those two center back pieces for the back bodice. So I've gone ahead and sewn all of the bodice pieces together for both the shell and the lining and I decided to do a fully lined bodice except for the pieces in the back that are shirred and attached to the back. So I just thought that would be easier for the construction of this garment. And I've attached the sheared pieces to the bodice that has been interfaced. So this is the one that has the bust cups that are interfaced and this little center front panel that's interfaced. And I've got those sheared pieces attached to the back. I will have a zipper attached to the center back here that connects those in the center back. I'm not gonna do that just yet. When I attach these to the bodice, I also made sure to kind of step it down a little bit and leave some room for seam allowance here when I sew on the lining. I've just basted the edge of the strap together for now because I'm probably gonna add a flounce to the strap, but I kinda just wanna get it installed and see how I like it first before I make that decision. So I can kind of remove that basting stitch later. But that'll just kinda keep it in place while I sew it to the bodice. So I'm gonna line that with that seam there for the princess seam and pin that in place. Then I'll take the lining pieces of the bodice and lay those right sides together with the exterior pieces. And I'm just going to sew all of this together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance along that top neckline to attach the lining to the exterior shell. I'm just gonna grade down my seam allowances. I may try to understitch the seam allowance too. I don't know how close I'll be able to get on the kind of neckline here, but uh, I may try to do that just to kind of help keep that seam allowance, you know, turned down and keep the lining turned toward the interior of the garment. And then once I do that, I can kind of flip everything right side out and I'll just fold down the edge of the lining and top stitch it over the area that I have the shearing here. Then I'll also insert the zipper. I'm probably getting a little ahead of myself, but yeah, I'm getting pretty close to finishing. I just have a few finishing details that I may need to add to this top, but yeah. I've gotten most of the construction done and it actually fits pretty well. I tried it on a few minutes ago and it fits great. It, right now it looks kind of like a tankini top. <laughs> so it looks a little bit like a swimsuit with this print. Oh, my hair is crazy. This is sewing in real life. Okay, so I had this little scrap of rectangular fabric here and I thought, let me just try to do like a little flounce sleeve and just kind of gathered along here. And I think I really actually like that with that rectangular shape. And it kind of reminds me of this dress that I saw from Reformation that has a sleeve that basically looks like this on a dress. And so I think what I might do is start it here where the strap meets the front bodice and extend it to, I don't know, about halfway down the back. I don't need it to go all the way to the back um, where the strap meets the back bodice. And I think it'll kind of create a little like cap sleeve look. It'll be really easy to make. So I'm gonna cut a piece of fabric that is the length that I want it to be plus 0.5. So 1.5 times that length. Uh, I think that'll be really cute. So I just cut a strip of fabric. This one I made six inches wide and approximately 17 inches long. I went ahead and just hemmed up the edges here on three sides. And then I sewed two rows of basting stitches here. I'm just gonna gather this and place it into the strap. Close it up, stitch along the edge of the strap, and then it'll be inserted. Now I just want to add a little ruffle down here at the bottom, and I think 
that will be just about it for this top.